good happy Sunday afternoon, February 14, 2021, and happy Valentine's Day. I'm Riley King, and welcome to this afternoon edition of the Riley King Newscast, right here on the Riley King Network. We have a lot of news to get to this afternoon, so let's begin. First up, person of interest in Yale students' murder believed to have visited Connecticut and mass car dealerships, police say. A man wanted for question in Connecticut to the death of a Yale graduate student visited car dealerships in Connecticut and Massachusetts prior to the killing, according to New Haven Police. That person visited a car dealership looking to purchase a small model SUV and even asked to test drive vehicles, according to police. Police said the person also asked to bring the vehicle to his mechanic for inspection. Police are asking any car dealership who might have had contact with the person in recent months to call New Haven Police at 203-945-6304 or an anonymous tip line at 866-888-8475. Family members told investigators that person was carrying a black backpack and was acting strange. U.S. Marshals joined the investigation and charged the person with unlawful flight to avoid prosecution. Police want to question the person in connection to the shooting death of a Yale graduate student on Lawrence Street in New Haven Saturday. On Thursday, New Haven police were searching behind Arby's on Washington Avenue in New Haven. The restaurant next to the A Best Western Hotel where police said the person was last seen in Connecticut. Several plain clothes officers were using a dog and a mess metal detector to search in the snow and a wooded area behind Arby's. The general manager of Best Western said the man checked in around 10.30 p.m. on Saturday with an ID and credit card. He never checked out and the room appeared to be untouched. The general manager said it didn't look like the man stayed in the room Saturday night. Police Chief said the man should be considered armed and dangerous and the public should use extreme cautious if they come in contact with him. He said there is an arrest warrant out for the man surrounding his possession of a stolen vehicle in New Haven. The man's last known address is in Malden, Massachusetts and he is a graduate of MIT. Emergency crews were called to Lawrence Street between Nicole and Nash Streets just after 8.30 p.m. on Saturday after getting multiple 911 calls of gunfire and a person shot. Jean was found dead and found shot to death at the scene. He was set to graduate next year, police said. According to authorities, Jean was operating a vehicle at the time of the shooting. Investigators are looking into whether he was involved in a vehicle accident before the shooting. Police did not say whether the man and Jiang had an existing relationship. However, MIT confirmed that the man has been enrolled as a graduate student at the university since 2014. Jiang financed the graduate from MIT in 2020. The U.S. Marshals 
are offering a 5,000 cash reward information leading to the man's arrest. Any information should call the U.S. Marshal at 1-877-WANTED-2. And here is a photo of that person of interest. Take a look. So if you have any information of where that person of interest is, call the New Haven Police Department. Or U.S. Marshal's Office. Maine teacher husband killed in home invasion. A nursing instructor at a local technical high school and her husband were killed during a home invasion in Turner, Maine early Friday, and the suspect was arrested in the home, police said. Croy Varney, 52, was unresponsive, and Dolias Varney, 48, was in medical distress when the first officers arrived. Both died later at the hospital, said Catherine England, state police spokesperson. Patrick Mahir, 24, of Turner, was charged with two counts of murder and was held at Androscoggin County Jail, New England, said. Dialson Varney was a nursing instructor who worked at Lewiston Regional Technical Center and was the short of educator that every student should be blessed with at least once in their school careers. The school's director, Rob Callahan, wrote in a letter to the school community. In the letter, Callahan said the matter was still under investigation, but said he understood that the alternate was a tenant. Police had no immediate contact on the relationship between Minier and Varney's. It's unclear whether Minier had an attorney. State police and deputies from Androscoggin County Sheriff's Department were called to the Varney home at about 1.30 a.m. Friday. Hours later, the state police mobile crime unit also arrived at the scene. The investigation was continuing Friday afternoon with evidence collection teams and detectives remaining at the scene. Bedford B4 Bratcher Police Commissioner appoints Walsh administration only considered one candidate report. Recently appointed Boston Police Commissioner Dennis White placed on leave just days after being appointed over domestic violence allegations was the only person considered for the position following the departure of his predecessor, the Boston Globe report. White, a 32-year-old veteran officer was given the job without a formal interview based slowly on the recommendations of former police commissioner William Gross, sources told The Globe. The newspaper reported that Gross made the recommendations after deciding to leave the post after learning of a serious health concern. The report provided some insight into Walsh's decision to promote White, which has become an embarrassing issue with Walsh posed to become the Biden's administration secretary of labor. White was sworn in to lead the Boston Police Department as its 43rd commissioner on February 2nd. He was then placed on administrative leave just two days after a domestic violence allegation from 20 years ago surfaced. In 1990, 99, White allegedly pushed and threatened to shoot his then-wife, who 
was also a police officer, according to court paperwork. His wife told police at the time, he may come inside and kill me because he's angry. White denied all the allegations against him at the time. A judge issued a restraining order against him, ordering White to stay away from his family. The decision of who to install as a police commissioner is often the most consequential decision a mayor will make, according to Robert L. Davis, a law enforcement consultant who has been involved with venting and hiring other police chiefs around the country. For a police department the size of Boston, the hiring process typically lasts three two or four months, Davis said. That process routinely includes a review of internal affairs matters as well as commendations, performance appraisals, and feedback from the community. Walsh said in a statement that White was asked to quickly step into the role of police commissioner and that neither he nor his staff were aware of these disturbing issues. Superintendent in Chief Gregory Long will serve as acting commissioner while White is on leave, according to the mayor. Woman seriously injured in Pelham, New Hampshire snowmobile crash. One woman was seriously injured in a snowmobile accident in Pelham, New Hampshire, Saturday afternoon, officials announced. The Pelham Police and Fire Department responded to a report of a snowmobile accident around 1.30 p.m. at a residence on Noel Avenue. Upon arrival, officials found a Massachusetts woman later identified as Michelle Sidball on the ground, suffering from serious injuries. Sibal, 60, of North Reading, Massachusetts, was transported to Lowell General Hospital with life-threatening injuries. The woman had been driving a 1997 Atrac Cat 600, according to authorities. The primarily investigation cited operator error as the cause of the accident. Speed and alcohol did not appear to be factors in the crash, authorities said. The accident remains under investigation by the Pelham Police Department and New Hampshire Fish and Game Department. Rhode Island police chase stolen Boston fire truck on rims. Police in Shepherdray, Rhode Island chased down a Quincy woman allegedly driving a stolen Boston fire truck on rims Thursday night. Police received numerous calls about the car driving on one of its rims on Route shortly before 7 p.m. Thursday. The suspect, later identified as a 20-year-old woman, was driving a marked Boston Fire Department pickup truck that was allegedly stolen from the Boston Fire Department Academy in Quincy on Thursday. Coventry police tried to pull the truck over, but she continued driving at a low rate of speed, according to officials, crossing into the town of West Warwick. The woman allegedly led police through several neighboring communities as well as onto the highway before ultimately turning into a dead end neighborhood in East Greenwich. She stopped in a private driveway, police said, and was subsequently taken into custody. Police said that alcohol did not appear to be involved. The speed limit was never exceeded, 
and there were no in reported injuries or additional property damage. The woman is currently being charged with possession of a stolen car, reckless driving, and eluding police, obstructing an officer, and operating on a suspended license. The woman is facing two additional charges stemming from her conduct at Chevrolet Police Headquarters, assault on a police officer who has minor injuries and in resisting arrest. The woman was held overnight at the Conover Tree Police Department and is due to be arraigned Friday at Kent Court County Courthouse. Seventy and older can start registering for a vaccine next week in Vermont. The next age group in Vermont eligible for coronavirus vaccinations, people 70 and older, may start registering for required vaccine appointments next week, state officials said on Friday. Trump remains dominant force in GOP following acquittal. The Republican Party still belongs to Donald Trump. After he indicated a deadly riot at the U.S. Capitol last month, the GOP considered purging the norm, shattering former president. But in the end, only 7 of 50 state Senate Republicans voted to convict Trump in a historic second impeachment trial on Saturday. And that is it for this afternoon edition of the Riley King Newscast right here on the Riley King Network. I hope you all have a great rest of your Sunday afternoon. I'll see you back here later on today for another newscast. I'll have a news report coming up in a little bit. Goodbye everyone. Thank you for watching.